Palestine is one long-awaited recognition at the U.N. after more than two-thirds of member states voted in favor of upgrading its status. The decision came as a blow to Israel and the U.S., who harshly opposed the move, calling it counterproductive. Right after the historic vote, my colleague Sean Thomas spoke to our correspondents in New York and Tel Aviv, as well as an activist in Gaza. 138 countries, including Russia, voted in support of the draft resolution that now elevates Palestine's status to non-member observer state. Palestine will be able to join the International Criminal Court. This would allow Palestine to press for investigations into uh, Israel's practices in the occupied uh, territories. Uh, it would also be able to join UN uh, agencies. 41 countries abstained from voting on the resolution and nine countries voted no. That includes the U.S. U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Susan Rice addressed the General Assembly calling Palestine's U.N. bid of provocative action and also encouraged Palestine and Israel to resume direct negotiations. Clearly, uh, this changes uh, the dynamic very much so uh, within the U.N. General Assembly. Uh, while uh, uh, Palestine uh, is not uh, considered, does not have a full membership at the United Nations, having this non-member observer status uh, is extremely symbolic and does show at the end of the day uh, where the international community does stand on this issue. All right. Now, Harry, you are in Gaza as we speak. What's the mood there on the ground at the moment? And do you think that this bid will actually change anything on the ground? Well, uh, Gazans absolutely jubilant about this result. Um, they're chanting um, supportive notions for the Palestinian uh, president, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Mazen, commonly known by this name uh, here in Gaza. Um, Palestinians in Gaza are not uh, particularly interested in whether or not this will change anything on the ground in Gaza. Uh, particularly, but in the West Bank, with the illegal settlements being built there, this colonization pro project, as how Gazans and Palestinians see it widely, um, they are hoping that that will be uh, withdrawn and that will be rolled back as a result of this more increased legal clout that will be affected uh, by this increased status. Thanks. Now, Paula, how has Israel taken the news of this vote so far? Well, when the Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, Ron Poser, put forward his address to the United Nations General Assembly, he was essentially representing what has been and continues to be the Israeli point of view. He said that the Palestinian leadership made a mistake in making this bid in the first place. He said that the resolution was one-sided and that it did not in any way address the security concerns that the State of Israel has. He also said that it would push the peace process for further backwards rather than move it forwards. And this is a view that we've heard repeatedly from the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. He says that the only way forward for a two-state solution is for there to be direct negotiations at the negotiating table between Israelis and Palestinians, and that there cannot be any declaration of a state without first having these negotiations for a long-lasting peace. Now, we have heard more radical calls for sanctions. We certainly have heard earlier this week from the Israeli Foreign Minister, Avigdor Lieberman, who says that there needs to be an extreme reaction to the Palestinians if indeed they go ahead with this bid. Certainly, though, in the recent days and in the recent hours, there has been a toned down Israeli reaction, certainly as they, they sensed that the bid was going to go the direction of the Palestinians. We know also that the Israelis have been scared of making any kind of statements that could be used against them in the future. But at the moment in Israel, the reaction is muted. It was very much expected that the bid would go in this direction.